Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back again to the subject and the teaching on prayer. I enjoy teaching on prayer, and we've called this class the dynamics of prayer or theology of prayer, however you want to approach this. But it's not so much about a title. It's not so much about what you call something. It's what we do. Life is, is uh, life throws at us challenges, and we've got to know how to handle them, especially those of, uh, of us that are in Bible school, those of us that are taking classes because we want to achieve things and do things in ministry. We must understand that the foundation that we have becomes very important. That's why taking time to teach on prayer is very important, but taking time to pray is even more important. We can have a lot of knowledge about things, but we'll never get to desired results if we don't know how to apply it. So it's in my heart that not only do you learn concepts and ideas and understand what the Bible says about it, I want you to have a desire so that you can step into this and be able to obtain things that you desire in your heart. I believe it's in the heart of every person, every person, to be able to achieve the things that they believe God has called them to do. Everyone, it doesn't matter if you're from the pulpit or to the ministry of helps in the church, everyone has a mandate of God upon their life. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you fulfill that mandate, that no one leaves this world without fulfilling the very call and purpose of God upon their life. I want to get right into today's subject of prayer. And uh, before we do that, let's go ahead and pray that God would open our heart and open our eyes, the eyes of our understanding that we may receive and to get everything that he wants us to have. Father, I pray right now in your name. I thank you for the word of God. I thank you for your plans and purposes and how to pursue those plans and purposes. Father, I pray right now for the spirit of wisdom and revelation and understanding to be upon us as we open our hearts, open your scriptures. And Lord, that you may put in us the very things that you desire. And when this thing is all done, we know. We know that your plan in our life will be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, if you got your Bible today, we want to go right back to some verses. I told you right up front when we begin the teaching of this that some verses we're going to use over and over, and we're going to uh, rehearse some things and uh, go over some things because faith doesn't always faith doesn't only come by he, faith. Or let's put it this way: faith comes by hearing not by having heard. Always remember that. Just because you heard something doesn't mean that you don't need to hear it again. All right, let's go back to the book of Luke, chapter 11. The book of Luke, chapter 11. These verses are simple, but it gives us an idea of what's going on. And it came to pass that as he was praying... Jesus was praying again in a certain place. We read this not long ago. When he ceased or stopped praying, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. I believe it's in the heart of everyone to desire to pray. I really do. Not everyone understands how to pray, but I believe it's desire they have to pray. Now, I want to make a statement that we have made several times, but I want you to understand it. I've watched so many people, especially when you turn the calendar into a new year, whatever, whenever that is, that new year calendar uh, that you are facing, people begin to say, I'm going to pray every day, I'm going to read the Bible every day, or they'll find <clears throat> a uh, read the Bible through the year uh, book, and they're going to do this. Now, when things don't go according to plan, when you get one day behind, two day behind, a week behind, three weeks behind, now you're feeling so burdened on how I'm going to get caught up. Instead of something being a pleasure to you, you've made it a bondage. Prayer becomes the same way. I'm going to pray every day. And I tell people, don't ever set this until you build yourself up to that. I'm going to pray an hour every morning. Or I'm going to pray an hour every night. And you try to do it, and you can't do it. Or you're praying, but your mind is is miles and miles away. You're not focusing upon what's going on. I've watched more people put themselves in bondage 
over trying to fulfill a read through the Bible year program and put yourself into bondage on how much they need to pray that they can't enjoy what they're doing. What I want to do is give you ideas, concepts, and insights about what it is. Believe God for desire in your heart so you can stay free from bondage and enjoy the presence of Almighty God. That's what I desire. The disciples said, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. And I believe it's in all of us to want to learn how to pray. And so uh, with that being said, we want to move further into this about about us learning to pray okay now we have been talking about the life of jesus how he was a man of prayer we read here that he went to pray uh, he prayed morning he prayed night uh he got done preaching and went to prayer and then we talked about nehemiah how nehemiah was a man of prayer nehemiah was a man of action a man of courage a man of perseverance uh and we talked about these things. Now we want to get into more of what I call the weaponry of prayer. The weaponry of prayer. What do we have as a weapon in prayer? And so in dealing with this, to talk about a weapon in prayer, the first thing I want to deal with is the name of Jesus. There's three things that we have you will find in your notes is the name of Jesus. We're talking about the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. The name of Jesus is a weapon. The word of God is a weapon and the Holy Spirit. These are three weapons that I'm going to deal with in prayer. The name of Jesus, the word of God, and the Holy Spirit. We are not helpless. We have the power. We have all the tools that we need to make this happen. And so since we come to the Father, no man comes to the Father except through Jesus. We pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. I was teaching a class one one day. This was had to be 25 years ago. I was teaching a class of an adults in a Sunday school setting, and uh, I was talking about prayer because I'll never forget this one lady. Uh, she's gone to be with the Lord now. Uh, raised in a Pentecostal setting all of her life. Raised around people that prayed. Uh, raised in church. Uh, very disciplined. And she raised her hand and she made this statement. I know how to pray to the Father. I, I, I know how to pray to the Son, but I don't understand uh, the work of the Spirit in prayer. And I'm thinking, out of all of these years, you know how to pray to the Father. You know how the name of Jesus is applied, but you don't understand how the work of the Spirit operates in prayer. So when she asked me that question, being you know, well in her years, I'm thinking, how many other people get confused about how to pray? How many other people get confused on, on, on what to do in prayer? And so I, I want us to understand you must take time to pray. And prayer can be work, but you've got to stay in it. You've got to do something to keep your mind focused because you will get results if you pray. Now, well, let's look at this. Weapons of prayer that guarantees results. The weapons in prayer that guarantees results. And the first thing I want to talk about is the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is the weapon. For there is no other name under heaven given by men whereby we must be saved. At the mention of that name, every knee shall bow. We'll look at some of these verses. At the mention of that name. That name is so glorious. I tell people, the scripture says in the book of John, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. So God made himself equal to the word. In the beginning, there was three. The Father, in the beginning was the, in the, beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. The Bible says there's three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. These three bear record in heaven. These three become one. Now, the Word was always there. People say Jesus has been there from the very beginning. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. Yes and no. The Word of God was the Alpha and really the Omega. Before the birth, where the Word became flesh, born of a virgin into this earth, the only name that was given was the Word. 
But when the fullness of time came, that word, through a virgin birth, came into this world. And God gave the word a name and called his name Jesus. From the time he was born, we took on this name called Jesus. This name is powerful. This name is glorious. And when you understand how to use this name in prayer, you will get excited about praying because you know in that name it is done and accomplished. That name is that name brings all victory. And so instead of you toiling, we talked about toiling, remember? Instead of you rowing and toiling in prayer, where it seems like you're getting nowhere, I believe God now in the name of Jesus that your prayer life is going to begin to sail. You're going to begin to move forward. You're going to step out of the three-minute prayer. You're going to step out of the five-minute prayer, the ten-minute prayers, and you're going to be able to be in the presence of God and enjoy it and not call it, oh, i got to go pray again. But you're going to be able to enjoy it. If you learn to do this when you're younger, you'll have more joy in it when you're older. Uh, before I talk about that name, I was going to share something uh, a few minutes ago where it talked about people don't put yourself in a, in a time of bondage where you, uh, you say you're going to pray for an hour, but you can't. That's bondage. But at the same time, it's not how long you pray. It's what you accomplish when you're in prayer. But you will find out that you'll want to spend more time in prayer. I was, I, I was in a meeting with some uh, elders one time, and, and uh, we would meet together for an elders' prayer meeting. And there was this elder. I mean, the guy's 90-some years old now. But there was this elder that always prayed. We knelt down in a room. Matter of fact, we would show up at church at 6 a.m. in the morning. Elders would pray. And uh, we would be praying about 15 minutes, and this elder, he would stand up and start singing a hymn song that he's memorized where he sings so many hymns. And we're trying to pray, and he's singing a hymn. And the next morning, we meet for 6 o'clock. After about 15 minutes, he's singing a hymn. And that began to bother me because it distracted me. It, uh, it's distracted the prayer meeting. And I spoke to the pastor. I said, uh, why doesn't he... What, you know, why, why doesn't he just stay praying? And uh, it's not because, you know, and then I discovered it's not because he just wants to sing. Out of all of those years, he never disciplined himself to keep his knees bent to pray. Fifteen minutes was his threshold. Ten to fifteen minutes, maybe eighteen, was his threshold. When he got to that limit, he didn't know what to do. He didn't know how to go into a different area. Maybe he didn't know how to pull out different weapons and different kinds of prayers that we talked about. And he reached his threshold. And now he was well up in his years. He was up in his 60s at that time, maybe early 70s at that time. And, he, and I believe that he, he maxed out with that threshold because that's where he stopped. Now, what I want to try to get you to do is get past that threshold where you can really spend some quality time in the name of Jesus in prayer. Now, when you understand the power of that name, you will understand that I could stay here all day long. I could stay here all day long. And because in the presence of God, there's fullness of joy. That's what the Bible declares. In the presence of God, in God's presence, there's fullness of joy. Why do I love the presence of God? Because the Bible says that the mountains in our life, the mountains will begin to melt like wax at the presence of God. If I can get where the presence of God is, the mountains will begin to melt like wax. My heart will, will, will live in victory because I'm not just begging anymore. I know there's a confidence in God that his word is true. So looking at this, the name of Jesus this name is great. This name is powerful. So let me, let me discuss some things here with you that I wrote down. I want you to study this. If you've got materials about the name of Jesus, what made this name great? I'm going to recommend a book. I know not everyone recommends this author maybe, but I love this book written by the late Kenneth E. Hagan. 
This is the Legacy Edition. It's called The Name of Jesus. This book I refer to and I've read. You know, people can say things like, well, I don't know if I agree with all of his doctrine. You know, people disagree with his doctrine, maybe about faith or this or that. But let me tell you, in reading this book, when it came to the name of Jesus, when it comes to his understanding about the name and the things that he's received, I found it to be very refreshing and very phenomenal. So when you look at this, he says that uh, what made this name so great? What made this name so great? Number one, he, it was great because he inherited, according to the scriptures, Jesus inherited a great name. Let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 1, and let's look at this. The book of Hebrews chapter 1, he inherited a great name. The name is great because of how it was received. In the book of Hebrews chapter 1, Let's just read Hebrews chapter 1. Let's read verse 1. God, who at sundry times and in diver manner spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spake unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent than name than they. So he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. To, to which of the angels did he say that to? And it says here that being made much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a better name. Jesus received this name by inheritance of the father. What makes this name great is what this name brought into existence. I have watched the results of this name so many times. I have called out to this called out in this name in times of trouble and it delivered me immediately. This name is great. This name is powerful. So number 1, he inherited this name. Now, I don't want to be the kind of teacher that takes all of the work away from you so you don't have to study. So if you want to get into a study about the name of Jesus, you have resources like this, but you have the Bible. Begin to study about what God did and how he gave him this name. What God did, and he gave him his name. So he inherited a great name. Number one, this name was great because he inherited it. Jesus inherited it. The name was great because of his achievements by conquest, his defeats, his triumphs. The name was great because of what he did. And that's what you understand. When, when you know we serve God because who God is, we trust in this name by how it came and what this name produced. This name was achieved by conquest, by victory, by triumph. Colossians 1.13, we read Paul's prayers out of the book of Colossians, but just look at, let's look at a few verses here in the book of Colossians. Colossians 1.13, it says, uh, let's just, uh, man, it's hard to go, on, go into the, to the, the middle, middle of this. Verse, verse 12, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us able to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, and whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Now, we know that he received this name by inheritance. He, he achieved this name by conquest. Look at chapter 2, verse 15. And he, Jesus, having spoiled 
principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly, triumphant over them in it. This is talking about when Jesus spoiled principalities and powers, where, where he rendered the enemy powerless. He achieved this, and we see victory through this name by the triumphs that he had. I, I don't want to just talk about the name and say, believe in the name, preach in the name, cast out devils in the name, do everything in that name. I want to know that the name that I lean on is the name that was given by the Father, the word Jesus, he inherited this name. He achieved this name by conquest. And his name was great because it was conferred or bestowed or placed upon him. It was placed upon him. Philippians chapter 2. You know these verses. This name was great because it was placed upon him. I'm going to start right at verse 5. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God, thought it not robber to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him. Oh, I love that. And given him a name, which is above every name, highly exalted him and gave him a name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven things in the earth and things under the earth and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father Jesus received these three names by inheritance by achievement by conquest and by and because it was conferred upon him, according to the scriptures, he gave him a name above every name. And I love that. This name is so great. This name is so powerful. Now, this name has been given unto you and I. It's been given to us. And uh, I know sometimes because it's a 50-minute spot, I rush. I may speak a little fast. But I want you to understand. I want to slow down into this. I want you to understand that when you speak that name, things come, heaven comes to attention. I don't want to just give you examples out of books. I don't want to just read verses that you can read yourself. I want to give you some real life examples about this name and what this name does. I believe in my heart. Now I realize some of you come from different backgrounds. I believe Jesus went about doing good. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Who went about doing good, healing all that's oppressed of the devil. I believe Jesus preached, he taught, he healed, he cast out devils. I believe he set things in order. I believe he opened blinded eyes. He created miracles. I believe these are the things that Jesus did. I believe he was God that came in the flesh, the Word. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That Word took up on flesh and dwelt among us. John says we know it's true because we were there. We heard Him. We handled. We touched the Word of life. This is so true that I start applying this. When I started traveling overseas in 1994, going into the bush countries of Africa and uh, in the jungles of Indonesia, I've been there and other places when there was nothing else you could do but call upon the name of Jesus. I have stood in areas where people didn't really believe in the God that we serve but attend a different mosque. And I said, my God can do anything. If you need to be healed, you need to be delivered, you need a miracle, I want you to know if you come today, my God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, will deliver you and set you free. There's a boldness that came to me when I understand this name that was given to him was made available to me. I want to uh, give you a couple little side stories here. One day I was, when I traveled, I, you know, I pastor now and, and I oversee several other churches and pastors and leaders. But while I was traveling full time around America and around the world, uh, I was, just came in from being on a two-week road trip. And one of my 
close friends was associate pastor at another church. And he called me and he said, uh, I'm visiting with this family. And the wife of the husband that attends the church. And, and uh, I'm, I'm with the daughter of, the wi- of this woman now. We're in the hospital. This mother is in intensive care. They give her no hope to live. They said she won't make it. And he says the family attends the church. And he says, Ken, I really believe in my heart this lady can live. If I had someone that understood agreement that would come and pray and agree with me, I believe we could get her healed and she could live. And I just wanted to know what you were doing and if you could come to the hospital. So I said, well, I've got to run this, Aaron, and I've got to make a stop here. Then I'll be right there. The hospital is about 15 minutes from where I lived. And so uh, I met this pastor friend of mine. I met the daughter of the woman that was there. The husband wasn't there. And they were in the waiting room of the intensive care unit. And when I went in there, he introduced me to the daughter, who I was. And he, had, he said, I already told her about our relationship, about who you are, how God has used you in, uh, different, in different ways. And we decided we're going to go in there and whatever the Lord tells you to do, that's what we're going to do. Now, I said, now, wait a minute. I came here to agree with you. So now he says that he wanted, he, he wanted to agree with me and whatever the Lord uh, told me to do, that's what we were going to do. We walked into this unit. The lady was all, all swollen up where the fluids were stored in her body. Uh, tubes everywhere. Machines everywhere. I mean, into the medical realm, uh, there was no hope. They pretty much told the daughter, there's no hope, really. And so as we stood by that bedside, you know, the first thing we like to do is let's take hands and we'll pray, Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus, according to your verses, how he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace is upon him, and by your stripes we are healed. You know, we pray pray and we give some verses. We anoint with oil. We lay hands on the sick and uh, believe in God to raise them up. But as we walked into that room and I stood on her right side, the daughter And my minister friend was on her left side of the hospital bed. And on the inside of me, all I heard was, say the name. And I said, before we pray how we know prayer should be, I want us to begin to just say the name. So I started off very uncomfortable. Jesus, Jesus, I thank you. I just say the name of Jesus. I said, come on, help me. And the daughter said, Jesus. And we just kept saying, Jesus, 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 Jesus. You're great and powerful. Jesus, you're our holy God, Jesus. And we said that for how long? I don't know. But the more we said that, the presence of God filled that room. I didn't lay hands up on her. I didn't anoint with oil. All we did was say, Jesus. I said, come on, let's say it again. Jesus. Let's say it again. Jesus. I said, before, we, before I lay my hands up on her, let's just say it again. Jesus. And when the power of God was so tangible, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating, tangible, tangible. I said, all right, woman, in the name of the Most High, the name of Jesus, we declare you healed. And we walked out of the room. She's in a coma. No hope. Fifteen minutes, she was out of the coma. Fifteen to thirty minutes, she was, she was back. And today, this was, this, this had to be fifteen Now, maybe 15 plus years ago, and she's still living today. What was it? It was that name. Just about three years ago, 
I was called to the Veterans Hospital, the VA hospital. A couple in my church, leadership couple. The man called me and said, my, my dad, has, uh, we, 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 we think he's dying and uh, heart problems. And when I got there to the hospital, he was in and out. He, he was checked in and he, I mean, he was checking in and out of life and, and they did CPR and brought him back. And so uh, as we were in the room, he flatlined again. The nurses said when we were done, they've never seen it happen like this. He flatlined. And so we begin to pray. And on the inside of me, I heard the same thing I heard years prior to that. Just say the name. I said, let's just pray the name. I was there. The son of the man was there. The, his, his wife was there. Not, not, not the wife of the man dying, but the wife of the couple of my church. And uh, we just started saying, Jesus. 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 The grandson came in. He wanted to see his grandfather. Jesus. We didn't lay hands on it. Didn't rebuke death. Just said Jesus. And all of a sudden. That heart machine started again. And he came out of that. The son talked to him. The daughter-in-law talked to him. The grandson talked to him. I talked to him. They were amazed and shocked. Well eventually. He passed on that night. But the son got to share with him his heart. The grandson, the grandson got to share with him his heart. Different things that he did. They got to share. Closure came. And it was victorious. Victorious. I'm not just talking about a name that I've just read about. I'm just talking about a name that I've read after other people talked about it. I'm talking about a name that I believe has brought victory and we'll continue to bring victory all the days of our life. There are guaranteed weapons in prayer. And the number one weapon is the name of Jesus. I have cast out devils in the name of Jesus. I laid hands on people wheezing like animals. With asthma. Ready. They, they, they would die with this. But in the name of Jesus. Jesus they were healed in the name of Jesus they were healed I want you to know that I believe in these last days God will use people the anointing the anointing will be greater and that name will be known far and near and it will change lives for eternity that name the first thing I want to deal with after understanding how he received that name is that name has been given unto us now by power of attorney. That name has been given unto us through the power of attorney. As I am, so shall you be. Everything the Father has, I give it unto you. That name has been given. Go with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 28. The book of Matthew, chapter 28. These are some of the last words that Jesus spoke that are written in Matthew's account, written in red. Verse 18, 28, 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, all power. Now, what did I say was powerful? That name. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go you therefore and teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. I am with you always. Lo, I'm with you always. How's he with us? Number one, when we're born again, his spirit dwells in us. We know he's with us by his spirit. Number two, he's with us because his name is there. I love that name. According to Philippians, it says that name, every knee shall bow in heaven, earth, and hell. Or I like to say in all three spheres, in all three realms, in, her, in things in heaven, things on earth, or things beneath the earth. Heaven, earth, and in hell. That name still stands supreme. All power has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. That word power, that word's authority. All authority has been given unto me. What, 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 what was part of that? 
that name. That name, it was, he inherited, it was bestowed upon him. He received it by conquest, what he did. It, it brought all this power. And uh, he said, all power has been given unto me. Now I give it unto you, this authority. I put it in you. Folks, everywhere we go, we have that name. Everywhere we go, when I speak that name, he's present. When I speak that name, he is present. Let's go back to chapter 18. Here's a verse. When we, we're going to talk eventually about different kinds of prayer. And we'll talk about the prayer of agreement. So not only is this verse used in the prayer of agreement, but I want to use it in the subject that as a weapon, we have the name of Jesus. Verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. All right. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of thee. Notice, where two or three are gathered together in my name. There I am in the midst of thee. So when you are gathered in the name of Jesus, he's there. It's not just the word Jesus. Yahshua HaMashiach. Whatever, whatever language that name Jesus comes out of. Uh, however they say it. When you are gathered in that name, he's present. When two or three are gathered together and we say in the name of Jesus, he shows up. It's like the story in Daniel when the three Hebrew children went in. The king looked over and said, didn't we put three in? He said, lo, I see four, and the fourth one is like the Son of God. Now, that fourth man showed up. There was three, but there was another one in there. They called him the fourth man. Many sermons have been preached called the fourth man. When two or three of us are gathered together, two or three, in the name of Jesus, the fourth man shows up because of that name. See, we can't do it by ourselves. I can't just preach it just because I want to preach. I can't teach it just because I want to teach it. I just can't. Uh, I'm not good enough. I don't have the, the power within me naturally to heal the sick, cast out devils, freely receive, freely re-give, freely you give. But I have that name, the name of Jesus. The name. There was one night I was in a situation. I didn't know if I was going to live or die. I didn't know if I would live or die that night. Fear and anxiety was upon me. And I fell asleep saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's power in that name. Verse 19, look at it again. I say unto you that if two or you agree on earth, that's that prayer of agreement, touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done of them, my Father, which is in heaven. Now, people can just say, where two or three are gathered together, you know, great things happen. Maybe, maybe not. You know, I went to many churches to preach. Some were small, some were larger. I went to places to preach where there's only five, six, half a dozen people, Maybe 13 people. But I still went to preach. And the pastor would get up partially embarrassed and say, Well, you know, God's going to do great things. Because it says we're two or three are gathered together. He's, he's, uh, he's in our midst. Well, maybe, maybe not. Just because you have two or three believers together saying, We're two or three are gathered together. He's here. Our great things can happen. Maybe or maybe not. It says when two or three are gathered together in my name there i'm in the midst you could have 15 20 gathered together if you don't bring him there through his name you're still alone see there's weapons i have a weapon i can't be defeated i have the name of jesus i have the word of god i have the holy spirit these are weapons that guarantee me results in life these are weapons that guarantee me results Every single time. Now, 
Let's go to a verse that we all know. Let's go to the book of Mark, chapter 16. Let me just read that. I really wasn't going to add that in right now. But let's just, let's just read Mark 16 a minute. Mark 16. Mark 16. I'll write that down myself there. So I remember I did that. We, we read it. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. In my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not, shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Verse 19. So then... After the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and set at the right hand of the Father. And they went forth, preaching everywhere, and the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. The Lord working with them? Working with them? How? The name. In my name. Ken, do you still believe that the name of Jesus still heals the sick? Yes. With the word of God and the power of the spirit. Do you still believe it's the name that, that can still raise the dead? Yes. With the word of God and the power of the spirit. Do you still believe the name of Jesus still sends devil on the run? Absolutely. Absolutely. I have the word of God on it and the power of the spirit to back it. I am a believer in this. Now let me talk about this word power of attorney. How has it been given unto us? It's been given to us like a power of attorney. Now, I don't know the age group of the, of the audience I have today. But power of attorney are what people refer to in the legal realm, the POA. They ask you when you go do a legal thing or, or hospital, do you have a POA? Uh, do you have a power of attorney? you have someone that, that uh, has the ability to sign on your behalf? In uh, 1995, I believe it was, uh, I was I was preparing to go back to Africa, and uh, I wanted to I want I needed someone to take care of a situation, and so Angel, which is my my wife, uh, there was a check coming in, but I had to be the one to sign it. I had to be the one who endorsed this because uh, it came through an, an accident that I was in. And, uh, and so what they did was it was a check that they cleared after all the medical was done. Uh, they sent me this check. So it was more of a reimbursement from, from this accident claim that happened. I, I fell off of a house while I was working some years prior to that. Broke my leg, had three operations in one year. And, um, and so workman's comp took care of all of it. This is before full-time ministry. Workman's comp took care of all of it. But they wanted to close the deal, so they said, we'll just give you a $10,000 settlement in case you have problems in the future. That's what it was about. And we'll send this check. But you have to be the one who takes care of it. Well, I knew this was coming in and everything, but I had to be gone. I needed this money for ministry. I needed it. Uh, matter of fact, I was going to be gone almost eight weeks on this trip. So I went to a lawyer. I never really had a lawyer that I'd said, this is my lawyer. But I went to the lawyer and I said, uh, I need to give Angel the right of a power of attorney. Now, some people think, well, your wife should have a right. But some legal things, it, it doesn't work that way. I could give a power of attorney to one of my kids, to my wife. I could give the power of attorney to anybody. But I wanted to give this power of attorney to Angel. He said, what kind of a power of attorney do you want? I said, I didn't know, but there was only one. He said, uh, you can give her a power of attorney over legal things. You can give her a power of attorney over health. 
Matter of fact, you can give her so much power of attorney that she could put you into a mental institution if she wanted to. I said, just a little below that. I don't, I don't want to go that far. He said, how much power do you want to give her? Because the truth is, once she has this document that says she is the POA, the power of attorney, when she stands in front of lawyers, she, she, she can, she, she's got the right to secure lawyers on your behalf. She's got the right to uh, meet with doctors on your behalf. She can meet with whatever business you have on your behalf. Because even though they're looking at Angel, according to that document, they don't see her. It's you. When she signs your name, they don't see it as her. They see it as you. Because you have you've you gave her this a power, this power, this right to stand on your behalf. God gave us the name of Jesus as a power of attorney. Jesus went away, according to this verse, at the right hand of the Father. But we have the name, and we have the document to prove it. So when we say the name of Jesus, it's as if we have this POA, this power of authority, this power of attorney, that we use that name as if he was here doing it himself. Where do we get this? Oh, Jesus, if you could just show up. He will show up with his name because you have the power of attorney to use that name. I'm, I'm not helpless. You're not helpless. Now, thank God for natural power of attorneys. You know, I don't trust all the law in, anyway. I can be skeptical, uh, skeptical about law and different things. Uh, well, you may have a power of attorney, but somebody could pay somebody else off and you could still lose the deal possible i mean i don't trust our the system of the united states of america in every aspect i realize there's corruption but i trust this system right here i trust this law james calls it the perfect law of liberty that we have no man can circumvent this no man can say uh that name won't work when you use that name understanding the power in which it holds Understand the power that has been given to you. You can have the victory that you desire every single time. This name is a weapon. When I speak this name, heaven comes to attention, earth comes to attention, and hell comes to attention. And Acts chapter 4, let me, let me read one more verse before we go. I know we're getting close to time. Acts chapter 4, the disciples... Uh, Peter and John went to the temple to pray one day at the hour of prayer. And there was a lame man laying at the temple gate. He's been laying there begging for alms. The Bible says that he's been laying, that he's been laying from his mother's womb. And he was above 38 years on whom this miracle uh, happened to. And so I don't. he's been there daily. They go in the temple daily. But one day they prayed. And they reached out to him and said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now, when they said in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk, that miracle happened. And the religious leaders got upset over that miracle. And they commanded them not to teach or preach anymore in that name. And so this is where we're at now. Verse 12 of chapter 4, I want to read this. Neither is there salvation any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That word saved is that word soteria, sozo. Or if you study the subjects of uh, soteriology, the name means everything. It denotes healing, it denotes deliverance, safety, preservation, prosperity. That's what the word salvation means. There's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we can be delivered, healed, rescued, preserved, uh, brought, uh, brought into a place of complete victory. Nothing missing, nothing broken in our life. This is the name that has been given. Father, I pray that your people receives understanding. They receive wisdom. I pray as they execute and as they press forth using this name, I declare victory over them now in the name of Jesus. So until the next time, remember how powerful this name is. You will never fail. And as I like to say, 
God's always ex exalted. The devil's always defeated. And Jesus, that name, is always Lord. Amen.